everyone. Tristan Fenholt here, and I hope that you have been encouraged by these messages that are coming forth. You know, the Lord is doing something in our midst, and he is speaking to his people through this situation that we're experiencing right now around the world. God is doing something, and God is speaking. And listen, the Lord wants to lead us all the way through this situation in complete victory. Did you know that? Whatever it is that you're facing right now, and I know we're all in this together in some ways, but yet we're all each individually facing more specific trials, more specific challenges than uh, what may be experienced by somebody else. But the Lord wants to lead you and he wants to lead me specifically through this wilderness, through this COVID-19 wilderness. But he wants to lead me and you uh, in complete victory. He doesn't want us exhausted in this journey uh, to the other side. He doesn't want us getting on the other side of this situation beaten down and broken and, and scarred and emotionally turbulent in any way. No, the Lord wants to lead us through this situation in complete victory. Not only victory at the end, but victory all the way through it. Did you know that? And it is available to you, and it is available to me. You know, I want to bring up something that Jesus himself said in John 16, 33. Listen to what Jesus said. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Notice this. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now listen to what Jesus said. In the world, you will have tribulation. Now, that's not a very encouraging thing that Jesus said, but it's true. In fact, you don't have to be alive very long to recognize that this world has a way of throwing things at us, throwing a monkey wrench into the middle of situations, a curveball, so to speak. And no doubt, even what we're experiencing around the world with COVID-19 is exactly that. Nobody really saw this coming. I know the Lord was giving certain prophetic words in advance, but by and large, man, this is a situation that is uh, very challenging and people didn't see coming. See, life has a way of throwing curveballs, Some, something as early as February. You know, we, we did not see quite the impact that this would have. So Jesus is even saying, in the world, you will have tribulation. He's not beating around the bush. He's not trying to paint a flowery picture that even if you're a Christian and if you're a believer, that you're not going to experience hardship. No, he says in the world, you will have tribulation. But he didn't only say that. Listen to what he goes on to say. In me, you may have peace. You see, even in this world, when, when we experience hardship and there's trials and there's things going on, that for God's people, we can have supernatural peace, even in the midst of these storms. And he goes on to say, be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. So even when we're going through hardship, you and I can have supernatural peace, and we can be of good cheer, because Jesus overcame this world. I want to leave you with two things here. The first is this, in the world, you will have tribulation. We will experience hardship, and we're going through something right now, this wilderness called COVID-19. But Jesus said he overcame the world. Did you know that Jesus also experienced trials in his life? See, we, we know that he's the Son of God. We know that he was filled with the Holy Spirit and operated in the power of the Holy Spirit. We know that he was without sin. He was the perfect person. He was also perfectly in the will of God. But even though he is God, even though that he was completely in the will of God, even, he experienced hardship. He experienced trials. We know that he faced the cross, and we, we understand that to be a tribulation that he experienced. But Jesus said something even before the cross in Luke twenty two twenty eight. 28. He said to his disciples who were with him, listen to this. You are those who have continued with me in my trials. You see, Jesus is admitting that he experienced trials. 
he experienced hardship. And he said to his disciples, you've continued with me in my trials, not their trials. Now they had them too, but he's saying you continued with me in my trials. Well, what are some of these trials that Jesus experienced? Well, in John chapter number four, the Bible records that Jesus was wearied from a long journey in the hot desert sun. You can read it in John chapter four. His cousin, John the Baptist, was murdered by the government. His good friend Lazarus also died. A crowd wanted to throw him off a cliff. His hometown friends rejected him. Even uh, his family at one point said that Jesus was out of his mind. The Pharisees completely, uh, constantly plotted how they might uh, put him to death, how they might trap him and put him to death. He was betrayed by one of his closest ministry partners. Even uh, Peter, his best friend, denied him. Thomas doubted him. Crowds walked away from him. And of course, we know that he was eventually crucified. So Jesus experienced hardship, but he also experienced emotional pain. Did you know that? The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 3, that Jesus was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That means that Jesus... He, he's a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. He knows what it's like to grieve, to experience emotions. The Bible records in the Gospels in multiple places that Jesus wept. The Bible also records in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus said, My soul, internally, my mind, will, and emotions, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. And the Bible records he was in great distress. So Jesus even experienced emotional turbulence and emotional trials, and he also experienced physical pain. We know that he was beaten and bruised. He was whipped and wounded. He was slapped across the face. His beard was plucked out. He was chastised. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. But through all of it, listen, Jesus overcame every obstacle and every trial that he experienced, every single one. And he not only overcame every natural trial and every emotional trial, but he overcame every spiritual trial as well. I'm encouraged with what the Bible says in Colossians 2.15 from the New Century Version. Listen to this. God stripped the spiritual rulers and powers of their authority. With the cross, Jesus won the victory and showed the world that they were powerless. You know what I love about that? Jesus also overcame every spiritual trial and strip the spiritual rulers, the demonic forces of their power and authority to show me and you that they are powerless. Listen, for those of us that are believers in Jesus, they are powerless. Jesus proved that to me and you. They're powerless. They have no power or authority over our life unless we give it to them. <laughs> but Jesus overcame it. I love Hebrews 4.15 from the New Living Translation says this, this high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. That's telling us Jesus understands our weaknesses. He understands what you're going through right now. No matter what it is you're going through, he understands our weaknesses. He faced all the same testings that we do, yet without sin. So Jesus walked through these trials. He overcame these trials, natural trials, emotional trials, spiritual trials, he overcame every single one of them, and so he also understands when you and I are going through them as well. But listen to what Jesus said. When you go through hardship, be of good cheer. Why is it that you and I can be of good cheer? Here's why. Because he overcame the world. Now, you may be wondering, that's all fine and dandy that Jesus overcame the world. But what about me? I'm the one that's in the world right now. I'm the one that's facing very real trials right now. This is my situation, you may be thinking to yourself. Well, listen to what Hebrews 3, 5, and 6 says. For he himself has said, he's talking about God, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Listen to what God says. I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
So whatever it is that you're going through right now, be encouraged that God will never leave you nor forsake you. And so you can boldly say something. You can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What's that mean? The one who overcame the world will help you overcome every trial, every obstacle, every challenge that you are facing right now. Whatever it is that you are facing, God will help you overcome that situation. Just as he overcame his, he will help you overcome yours. <laughs> Somebody needs to receive that right now. In fact, I want you to say out loud with me, the Lord himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Say that again. The Lord is my helper. Say that again. The Lord is my helper. I want you to say that out loud with me in faith if you can. The Lord is my helper. Listen, the one who overcame every natural trial, emotional trial, and spiritual trial is the one who said, I am with you and I am your helper. The Lord is your helper. Praise God. That's why we can be of good cheer. That's why we can be of good cheer. And then the verse goes on to say, I will not fear. See, some of you need to know right now, there is nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. If the Lord is with you, in fact, the Bible also says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Listen, if God is for you, what can be against you? See, if God is for you and God is with you and he is your helper, there's nothing to be concerned about. There's nothing to be fearful. So just even right where you're at, just say out of your mouth, I will not fear. I will not fear unemployment. Even if you're on unemployment, I will not fear unemployment. Even if you're not eligible for unemployment, say, I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear COVID-19. I will not fear the economy crashing. I will not fear. Why? Because you are with me and you are my helper. Praise God. I love the verse that says, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in you than COVID-19 that is in the world. Greater is he who is in you than unemployment that is in this world. Greater is he who is in you than any situation that you're facing right now. God is good. And 2 Corinthians 2.14 says this, and I want you to catch this. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph. Now, thanks be to God, listen, who always leads us in triumph. Listen, God wants to lead you in triumph. And that's what I'm talking about today, that we need to follow the Lord. And as we follow the Lord, he will lead us in triumph. He will lead you in victory, 100%, every step of the way. But we need to follow his lead. We need to lean in close. We need to hear him speak to us. And know this, he will always lead you in victory, not sometimes lead you in victory. Not that he desires to lead you in victory, though he does. No, he always leads in victory. See, if you will follow the Lord, he will lead you in victory in this situation that you're facing right now. Always. <laughs> Praise God. See, we need to follow the Lord and we need to follow him to victory. We need to follow him to victory. I want to close with Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. I quoted it earlier from a different translation, but I want you to hear it from the New King James. And I want to read both of these verses. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. In other words, Jesus is not looking down at us and saying, you guys, you know, look at what you're dealing with, suck it up. No, he understands because he walked through trials and he overcame them. So he sympathizes. He understands our weaknesses. So listen to verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly, come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So what do you need to do? We need to come boldly before the Lord. How do we come boldly? Let me leave you with three simple practical things. We come boldly through praise and worship. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Just open up your mouth and be thankful to the Lord. And we're gonna do that in just a moment. We're gonna come before the Lord with thanksgiving and with praise in our lips. So worship the Lord where you're at, come before him. 
You can also come before him in prayer. In prayer, communicate with the Lord. Let him know what it is that you're facing. He knows what it is you're facing, but he wants to hear it from you. He wants to communicate. Not only hear you communicate to him, but he wants to communicate to you. See, prayer is, a, is two ways. So many of us are so used to praying to God and communicating to him, but we don't stop to listen to what he has to say to us. So come to him through prayer, but listen to what he has to say. And the third is the word of God. Crack open the Bible, read the word, and God will speak to you and guide you and direct you from his word. And as you come before the Lord in praise and worship and thanksgiving, in prayer and in the word, listen, he'll be with you. He will speak to you. And if you'll incline your ear to hear what he has to say, and you follow his lead as he directs your steps, he will lead you in triumph. So Father, I thank you for your word today. And we submit ourselves to you, knowing that in this world we will have tribulation, but we can be of good cheer because you overcame this world. So we follow you closely, knowing that you will lead us in victory every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Hi, I'm Jerry German. Thank you for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, you can subscribe by clicking here. Or to watch another video, you can click here. Go ahead, pick one.